There's nothing I wouldn't do to get this game made. And I can't stop talking about it. I'm really in love with this product. As a matter of fact, if you want to talk to me, feel free to give me a call and we'll chat about it. I hope you can see your way clear to jumping into our Kickstarter. Thanks again. Goodbye. Hey guys, Angry Joe here, and uh, I wanted to share with you my support and pledge of a game on Kickstarter called Hex, MMO trading card game. But for some reason, when I first heard about Hex, I was like, I'm not, I don't care. I'm not even going to look at it. But then once I pulled the stick out of my ass, I looked, went over there, and I was like, what the hell? This game has like a million dollars, almost a million dollars when I uh, it was back for almost a million. I was like, wow, there is huge demand for the next big card game. So, but even then I didn't want to look at it. I was like, whatever, I'm going to support some of these other projects. But then I came back and I actually clicked the video. I clicked the Kickstarter video and I learned about what it was all about and then I immediately saw what everybody else saw in it, why it is um, getting so much support and the video is fucking hilarious and I want everybody right now to go and watch that video. I'll put the link in the description so that you can then go and watch that video before you play the rest of this video. <laughs> Hi, my name is Corey Jones, and I'm the president and head of creative for Cryptozoic Entertainment. Okay, because it's hilarious, it explains everything, and there's even some gameplay videos so you can see exactly how the game is going to play. And um, and so I got excited about it, and I want to support this game in the same way that I supported Star Citizen, going full on in. So I'm, I've pledged already at the um, $250 level, and what that is is a specific tier called the Guild Master tier. And so I will start an Angry Joe Army Guild and uh, everybody in that guild will get a 10% experience bonus and I have a bunch of extra booster packs to give to all my guild members. So um, if, you, if you like card games and you're looking for a new one that's on PC and now it just opened up a stretch goal to be on tablets and Android and all that other good stuff so you can play on the go. If you're looking for a new card game to play that's digital and that's really unique, because this one crosses TCG with MMO elements, with obviously with guilds, raids, dungeons, that kind of stuff. Um, then check it out if you like it. Um, when the game comes out, come back. We'll do a guild for it. We'll play together. We'll you know throw throw our support behind it. And uh, I want to also tell you guys that. After I saw how cool it was, <clears throat> I emailed him. I said, hey, you know, uh, can I do an interview? Can I talk with Corey, who is the president of Cryptozoic Games, which was awesome because I freaking love this game so much over here, this deck builder. So I wanted to kind of shoot the shit with him on that. But um, also basically have him explain in depth some of the new features, especially pertaining to the guild, that information that may not already be out there. So... Um, go check out the pledge video, come back here, and then watch this badass interview with Corey. You can tell how passionate he is, that he has real experience in this kind of stuff. And it really gives me hope that uh, this, this game is going to stand out, and it's going to be the next big card game. So check it out, and uh, watch the video. Hey guys, Angry Joe here, and I'm with Corey, the president of Cryptozoic uh, Games. Uh, a, ca a card game company that uh, I, I really, really love. In fact, one of my favorite games is back there. You can see it. it's the DC deck building game. Um, so I'm excited because they're working on their next project. And you may have uh, heard of it. It's called Hex. And uh, so he's here to uh, a um, answer a few questions uh, that I have for him. So thank you very much for being here, Corey. Oh, no, no problem. My pleasure. I, I love talking about it. So it's... Uh... It's my. It's uh, absolutely my pleasure. <laughs> Most definitely, you love talking about it. Uh, the first thing I want to uh, ask you is, I can see that you love the game because uh, your Kickstarter video. 
I mean, that was really awesome to see a president of a company doing some funny shit like that, you know? It really help, helps to show your passion for the game. Who came up with that hilarious Kickstarter video? Uh, th that was that was me. Uh, I <laughs> the, that I was your own the, idea. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm a bit of a goofball. So, you know, and I felt like I, I tried to... One of the things I love about Kickstarter just in general is the idea of sort of the singular vision. So, you know, there's so many products out there that are these massive collaborations of a lot of people and, uh, you know, sometimes they're great, sometimes they're not, but what you don't see a lot of in just, you know, normal products is this very sing this idea of a singular vision, something that can be a little weird or a little out there or, or hard to explain and that's how, you know, uh, in general Hex was when I would try to, you know, tell people at other publishers, other companies like, oh, it's an MMO, it's a TCG and and most of them, their eyes would just glaze over, and I'd be like, uh, you're not really getting it because you're not really my audience. And so if you were my audience, you'd be like, yes, but <laughs> so it's kind of hard. And with the, the Kickstarter video, I, like, like everything, I try to uh, be very true to my own sense of humor, and, uh, you know, and that's it's definitely my sense of humor. And it was like, I was very much a little bit nervous about it because... I was afraid a lot of people were looking and be like, "This game sounds cool, but what is this nine ball doing, like dressed as a girl and with all this other nonsense?" Just tell me about the game. Quit with your nonsense. But the video was so long; like the full version was like 15 minutes. I cut it down <laughs> to nine. And I'm like, "No one's gonna watch a fifth, uh, even a nine minute video. Like this is a, a disaster." And I thought, "Well, at least I got the humor in there, so maybe people will stick with it." But so far, the reaction has been super positive. So oh, I, I got I got lucky there. For sure. Um, and so who actually came up with the idea for this really unique game? Uh, that, that was me. I mean, it was definitely <laughs> something I've been thinking about for a very long time since I originally, you know, I pitched Upper Deck the idea of doing the World of Warcraft TCG. And it was because I felt like all those things I talk about in the video about how MMOs and TCGs have something in common, community, and there's this neat interaction. And so when I I pitched Upper Deck, let's do this, let's do it, because they were interviewing me to be the head of New Biz Dev. Like, let's make a game that's based on this game coming up called World of Warcraft, because it wasn't out at that point. My friends all worked at Blizzard, and I knew it was going to be big, because I had seen it, and I thought it was awesome. I thought, you know what would be awesome? Put virtual goods into physical packs, and then you would open them up, and it'd be like, whoa, I just got this amazing thing for in this other game. How cool is that? And then I had the idea for the raid decks, because that was the way that I had played with my friends, because my friends weren't as hardcore in terms of TCGs as I was. And so I would make all the decks for them, and then they'd play against <laughs> me and have this really god deck, and it was this big fun thing. That sounds that, like me. <laughs> yeah, and that was that was kind of where it was started. Um, and so when it when it came to like you know we were talking about new stuff to do, uh, I really felt like there was some some really exciting opportunities in this idea of going the other way instead of making a TCG based on MMO, taking the two things and making it the digital experience, and then all that other stuff I talk about, like how hard it was to find ways to play a TCG. In the physical space, when you get a little older, is really disheartening because you know when I was younger, I played Magic professionally, and I was a huge, I was so into it. I'd drive around to stores, I'd fly to like qualifiers for the Pro Tour. I, I mean, it was hardcore. But then you get older, and you don't, you don't have the time. You have, you yeah. know, I put the kids to bed. I have to yeah. work. I'm not driving to a card shop at like 10 o'clock at night, although I used right. to, you know, in the old days, but. And then I don't know. sometimes your friends like... drive off or they, they go to other states because of other job opportunities. So your magic yeah, your core yeah. magic players are gone. Right. So your 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 community fractures. And so having it all aggregated into, you know, one sort of online venue, and that's what's so great about like wow. You play wow online and it's like I've made real friends. Like I I mean I was a hardcore MMO player. I I played Ultima online like literally eight hours a day for a while when I was, <laughs> was working at Virgin Interactive. And uh, it became a problem. Like I was playing Ultima Online too much. I could not <laughs> sleep, and I was part of this like 200 person guild, and it was this. It, it <laughs> well, was I'm glad crazy. you broke the addiction because we probably wouldn't have what Cryptozoic. You'd yeah, still be in there yeah. in your dungeon. Well, I'm very passionate, and so I'll get into something, and I go full tilt. So like with World of Warcraft, also, I mean, I was very obsessive <laughs> about it. Um, well, but that's good. I, You're gonna go like, full tilt into Hex, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, that's that's been the last solid two years has been sort of all in on this thing, uh, and even you know uh, more than anything else, like because I'm still involved, like I'm doing the Lookouts comic book with the Penny Arcade guys, or some of the other board games, like you know DC deck building. We put a ton of work into that, and I was part of that, or making Epic Spell Wars, or all these other wacky things. 
but really 80% of my time is just, you know, hex. And 80% of my time is like about a full day and a half because I uh, pretty much live here at Cryptozoic. So <laughs> I'm uh, 12 hours a day, I'm going to guess, typically. Uh. I know um, how that is. So that actually leads into my next question is, how in God's name will all this be balanced? How long have you guys been playtesting this thing? And you said you've been working on it for two years. So my question is, will cards be buffed or debuffed from player feedback if like some strategies just seem like overwhelmingly powerful or anything like that? Uh, for Well, the two pieces of that answer. So uh, the first piece is uh, th there's the PVE and the PVP. And so for PvP, um, that's what we do for a living. I mean, that is a full-fledged, pro-grade, tournament-ready card game. And, I mean, we do a great job on the World of Warcraft trading card game. Uh, you know, all the guys here are very serious about, like, the development aspect. So we have the designers, who are the guys who make up crazy, fun cards, and then the developers who tell them, no, no. that <laughs> can't happen. So, but there's always this back and forth, and we, we do a great job balancing, like, you know, that professional-grade TCG component. And that's what the PvP is going to be. And when it gets to PVE, what we've done is kind of taken the gloves off and say, yeah, this will be fun. Let's make up this great sandbox component. So not only the socketing and the leveling a guy up that, that impacts all the different ways you can build a deck, but also the equipment, which I'm in love with. So all of that side of it, you're supposed to beat the AI. The AI is hard. People are underestimating what Chris Woods has done with our AI and the way we build dungeons and how the rules change. And there's these puzzly challenges. They're not easy. And so all of that super powerful deck stuff becomes so much fun to figure out how I'm going to beat down this dungeon. And you're supposed to beat the AI eventually. I mean, yeah, yeah. supposed to. So, <laughs> well, I think that's great. That, you can have both sides to it. You can right. go crazy. Like, because that's because of the fact that you have the MMO element in there, you can have go crazy in PvE with all the cards that people want to play with. But, you yeah. know, and then PvE, it's a more structured, like, competitive, right. let's do this, equal ground, and let's see your skill kind of thing. That's <clears throat> but I will say, on the PvE side, um, some of the combos look broken or crazy, but what we've been very careful about was identifying things that were degenerate. And so we've given you all the tools to make, a, you know, like make the nuclear bomb, but we're not giving you the plutonium. So you may look at these things and be like, I can make this bomb, it's going to be amazing. You're missing plutonium. Where We're definitely doing a good job of keeping certain things out of your reach so that you can build these bonkers combos that are going to win and they're going to be fun, but they're not going to be like, hey, I got these five cards, I guess I win turn one. Like, we're not going to have that. Okay, and so we've good. been very careful. Like, nothing will reduce the cost of a card to zero. So that, that's, and that's a very important distinction because there are cards that reduce costs, but as long as everything remains at least one, then that component that is a lot of times the engine for degenerate deck combos yeah. is sort of out of the picture. So yeah. that's that's a fun that's a fun uh, uh, lesson in terms of how we build all of that PVE content. But I think we've done a, a really good job. And I think people it, like the the PVE content will not be trivialized by how powerful the deck stuff is because the way the dungeons are made are challenging on all these different vectors. And so you have to figure out how to beat any individual dungeon. And that's the part people aren't really seeing yet. And, and, and I understand because we haven't shown it to you, so I apologize. But that's the part where <laughs> yeah. we're, we're still, there's some, uh, we've designed all these dungeons. We're in the implementation phase. A lot of what we're doing now is interface elements to try and maximize how uh, effective our interface design is because that's so important. Oh, yeah. The heavy lifting over the last two years have been building a card engine <clears throat> that can handle all of the, you know, Mill billions of combinatorial elements that you go into a real TCG with all the equipment and everything. Yeah. And then also uh, building all of the actual first card set. And so that's the real heavy lifting on this game. And the cool thing is we have our engine, uh, the, the card playing engine is about 90% right now. And okay. it's incredibly powerful. That's and so that's, that's like my, des my game designers can sit down with a visual tool set and actually create the new cards and play them right away. So it's not a programmer, it's my game designer. So it's just amazing. That's awesome. So, and you were just saying, so we know that there's PvE content and you guys are still working on the different dungeons. You'll have these cool areas to explore that you can do multiple paths through each time you play, depending on what character class you are. There may be sections that are locked off. I watched some of the videos, I got excited about it. And um, it just sa sounds real amazing to add, a, it adds a whole new dimension to the card game. But I was going to ask you, how many dungeons like this are there? And, you know, what other PvE content is in the game? Like, you mentioned puzzles. Um, is there an actual story? Is it story-driven for the characters that you select at the beginning of the game? I mean, will that mean that there's a character arc? 
Uh, yeah, so there's, uh, I think we're at, with the stretch with the stretch goal from the Kickstarter, I believe we're at just over 40 dungeons. 40? Uh, yeah, 40. Oh, right. and, that, and each that dungeon has include... those little uh, interactable areas, you know, there's, yep. uh, okay, cool, cool. So there'll be 40 dungeons, and they're of different lengths. Some of them may take an hour to do, some of them may take hours. The great thing is you can walk away from it, and it sort of saves your progress, so you can jump right back in. So it's like, because you're playing an AI opponent, they don't care if you, there's no stalling an AI opponent, they'll wait. So you can jump in and out of the dungeons, which is great. Um, but th there is a, uh, I believe it's eight dungeon arc that is telling a specific story. So we have a protagonist, an antagonist, a whole big storyline that uh, Mike and I created. And you actually progress through a linear story as one series of dungeons. They reference the other dungeons. And then there's bunches of dungeons that are just sort of standalone. Like you saw, we put up that one picture, like Junkyard Dogs, which is these knolls that have uh, taken up residence in this you know, colossal trash heap of dwarf scrap material and have taken all these robot bits and built them onto themselves. And these, like, So we, we have all these really great sort of one-off dungeon experiences. We have a linear arc story in the, an eight dungeon series. Um, when it comes to the other stuff you're talking about, other PBE stuff, there's also uh, factions. So we've got a bunch of different factions, and they're all very uh, tied back into the story component. And so you're going to be able to level up with that faction by completing quests. They'll have you go do things or collect things for them. Um, you'll be able to go into dungeons and unlock secret hidden areas. Uh, back to the faction piece. The faction piece unlocks uh, faction-specific cards and equipment and buffs. And so uh, you're going to get rewards for that sort of stuff. We actually have uh, two factions that are PvP-centric. So as you're going through the game... For a lot of the players, uh, I think there are a lot of players out there that uh, maybe aren't as familiar with TCGs or as comfortable with TCGs as the people who are very excited about PvP. And Hex offers this incredible opportunity for us to reach a new consumer. And as I'm very passionate about trading card games, and my feeling is um, if we create this amazing learning tool, this very gradual, it'll teach you what each type of card does very slowly, we may be able to turn some people who would love a trading card game but haven't had the chance to be taught it properly yeah. into somebody that would really enjoy Hex. Yeah. And so the single player experience and the learning experience and playing against the AI is the piece where I think people will be like a little more comfortable and a little more accessible uh, in terms of learning this game. Yeah, and we have, about, we have, we have it's two, all about uh, providing a positive experience. Like my friend who lives across the street, you would never think this guy plays magic. He's like a rapper. He has his own company. Right. He, he's on stage all the time. Then he comes back and he's like, man, let's play a game of magic, you know. And then when we're at, uh, what is it, like a Walmart or something, we're buying packs. You know, it's just weird to see, you know, and it's 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 the aspect of the competitive aspect of the game that gets us going. And, and yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, he's moved away now. So, you know, we don't ever really get to have that same experience. Um, right. I have a new friend for that, though. <laughs> but, um, you know, Think having a card game with... where you can play online with your friends yeah. is is so important to me. And, and it leads into my next question is in it. On the website, it says that you are able to explore those dungeons and do those battles with friends in epic raids. So, yeah. how many players can participate with you? Like, can my friend, you know, who moved away, show up in that raid with me? Like, how many can be in there? Uh, so, right now, the way it works is you—it's uh, a single-player experience for this first wave for the dungeons. So, you go into the dungeons. Uh, you're going to unlock on some of the dungeons a raid boss. And the raid boss are these really over the top, uh, super difficult to beat. They've got special cards. They've got in play effects that start in the game, uh, and those that is for up to three players. So one, two, or three. Uh, you may want to try and do a raid boss on your own. You're, you're probably not going to be very successful. <laughs> and if you have two people that have these crazy synergized decks that are very powerful, maybe they could take down a raid boss. But typically, they're they're tuned for three players, and uh, we feel like three is the optimal number right now. Uh, the one thing we have to watch out for, and this goes for all multiplayer components in a TCG, is how much downtime you have in between uh, the turn sequences. So when you're playing against an AI and you're all working with a common goal and you're using cards to affect the other player's play spaces and stuff like that, you're always engaged, and that's fun. Uh, but if we got outside of more than three people in a raid, my fear is that it would be too much time in between your turns and it would become kind of a negative play experience. A lot of what people have asked for in the in, in the forums and things that I, I want too. I want 2v2 like you don't know. Like that's my <laughs> favorite format. Yeah. My concern is that it may be a negative play experience because of how much time it takes in between turns. And 
We're but testing. People are, it. There's always going to be a segment of your market of hardcore players that don't care how long it takes. No, I, you know, and, I, and that's me. That is me. I will play with my friend, and that'll be like it'll be amazing. But everything we're doing now <clears throat> is trying to figure out how to make sure that everything we do give you, even the stuff that uh, we we want to give you but aren't now, how do we make sure that it is all uh, still leading to a great gameplay experience? Okay. Awesome, awesome. So, may, so you said two two v two is not going to be in it at the start. Is that something no, that, that you'll look at in the future for possibly we're, we're adding? Already, yeah, yeah, we're already uh, playing around with it now. So okay. it's it's not that the, it's not that the system can't do it; it can do it easily. It's just figuring out how we implement that in a way where people uh, enjoy it. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm most interested in the in this particular game that is the guilds. And I'm going to pledge at the guild master level um, so I can boost everybody in my guild, give them 10%, and then give them the goodies that come with the, uh, the Kickstarter thing. And, um, but I noticed that of all the levels, this is the one with the fewest pledges, and I think it's yeah. because people really don't know how it works yet. And you see there's like 900 pledges for this guy, or pro player, sold out, all this other stuff, but the, the guild. So can you explain exactly how guilds work? Because that's what I'm most excited about, and why you would want to be in one. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, well, the, the, it's interesting you brought up the point about the different pledge levels on the Kickstarter. Uh, you know, I made up all those, and... Uh, <laughs> It's definitely been an interesting litmus test of like my thinking. I tried to make them all compelling. I, you know, and in originally, I thought like I, it would be a stretch for people to you know go in at the hundred and twenty dollar king level. Yeah. I thought, well, oh, that's that's probably where people will net out. I made it really nice. It's a huge value. I think people will love it. And those other ones were like, well, I'm gonna make some wacky tiers that sort of actually explain all the different types of player you could be in the game, and I'll make those at two fifty. I don't think many people will buy them, but. At least it kind of lets me illustrate some interesting stuff about the game. And then this response we had was like, holy Moses, this is not what I expected. I mean, I'm thrilled more about the community that's developing than the money to be uh, perfectly transparent. But um, the guild one, yeah, is probably a little uh, you know, less exciting in some ways. I mean, the guild one that was, well, I think it's was great because about... because people don't know how guilds work. If they say, oh, yeah. well... Uh, now well, I know I, how I guilds put work. In the extra and... 90, I put in the extra 90 packs. I mean, like, that seemed like a pretty good buff to that one. But I don't know. So the um, the for the uh, guild, uh, in general, the guilds for Hex, you're going to be able to join a guild and uh, actually be able to have a guild interface where you're able to talk to just the other people in your guild. You're going to have a guild bank. And so with the guild bank, you're going to be able to check decks in, and other people can come in and play the decks that you've checked in against other people in the guild. You'll be able to type in notes for the deck. So if everyone's tuning a deck for a big tournament coming up, or you've made, there's three decks that you're saying, hey, this is going to be for the Kraken's gold raid to fight the Kraken, and to hear the three decks, and then somebody come in, well, this deck is good, but maybe more direct damage, so he can kind of control some of the random random mobs that are going to, random troops that are coming in, and then somebody else has a little more healing. And so you're going to have this whole really great group interaction about deck building, which is one of the things that's most compelling about TCGs. And then there's going to be also the ability to have what we've called, you know, sort of that guild combat. And so we're still figuring out how that works exactly, but there's going to be potentially tournaments that are guild centric. And then you'll be able, all the guilds will be getting ranked based on how many guild battle games they've played. Uh, there's a, a, just a ton of interesting guild stuff that's really about allowing a group of people to get together and feel connected. There's also when you uh, go into raids, you're going to be able to just, you know, ping your guild and see who's there to jump into a raid with you. So it'll be your first place for some of that stuff. Um, those are the big things for guild. I mean, we're still, uh, and like I said in that one update, um, I have a giant laundry list of features in the game that I haven't talked about yet yeah. that um, I want to put in, and it will be over the course of the next X number of years. Like, my commitment to the Hex community is that uh, we want to be profitable so that we can give you the best game possible. And we're definitely going to continue to reinvest in Hex and hopefully be releasing new features on like a quarterly basis. Like yeah. you look at what's great about World of Warcraft, um, they kept investing in that game. That game is very different today than it was when it launched. And I think that's really one of the biggest pieces of its power and staying power is this yeah. idea that they kept growing it. They kept making it better. How can anyone compete with it? I mean, it would be... It's ridiculous. You can't compete because it's just it's got so much work put into it at this point. Like and I think we have this opportunity because we're the first to try and do this and if we do it right and keep investing in it, 
then uh, no one would ever be able to touch us. Which yeah, is great. see, I have an iPad. I don't know where it is right now, and I've downloaded a lot of different card games on there. And to be honest, like I, you know, you've got your lane card battles and stuff, which you know, I think it's it's a little bit easier to create that type of game. But I was more coming from the Magic area, the Warcraft. It, um, you know, I was looking for something more like that. There really isn't a, yeah. a, a good solution. There's obviously, you know, magic, but there's got a lot of restrictions on that. But anyway, the the point I'm trying to make is that um, I think that the big criticism of many mobile and online uh, collectible card games is that they go overboard and they they charge cash for every tiny little thing in the game and yeah. you know turning it essentially into a pay to win. At least some of these other cheap ones that are made and just thrown up on the app store and you realize that you know you're not going to be competitive in it unless you dump eighty dollars for booster packs. You're not going to be a good player. Period. You know, yeah. um, so I wanted to know, you know, how much is Hex? Uh, we already know it's free to play, but, you know, I mean, what do you charge uh, for in it? Um, and will the booster packs and cards be cheaper than real life cards or will they be the same price? Uh, yeah, great questions. Like you mentioned, there's a lot of, and I've said this in a few interviews, there's a lot of, you know, lane, car, lane combat card games, very popular. I love them, actually. I play a ton of them. I, I think they're great. <laughs> And there's also, you know, card uh, card battle games. And card battle games, that to me is like where the word TCG gets kind of overused. Putting your art on an oblong square does not make you a trading card game. And a, calling a card battle game a trading card game is pretty disingenuous in my opinion. Um, for real TCGs are things where you're having interactions back and forth during one turn. So there's a chain and there's your ability to react. Uh, for Hex, Hex is uh, free to play, of course, uh, as we've said. Um, but we've also made the commitment that there's uh, three things that we would potentially charge for. And the, the first one is Starter decks. So I want to have uh, uh, I want to have a product that people who maybe aren't as familiar with deck building and are a little uncomfortable with deck building have a place where they can go. Oh, I, I really want this you know this uh, deck based on orcs, and that seems pretty cool. And I want to play an orc deck, but I don't know how to collect all the cards and build the deck. Great. So I have a, I have starter decks that are themed for you. I have booster packs. Uh, and booster packs are two dollars a piece, and then I have that VIP program. And the whole point of that was I wanted to give you the chance to get a, f a booster pack a week for four dollars a month. So basically, they're uh, one dollar, and then it gives you access to uh, a special tournament, and it gives you a couple of little features. So it's just kind of this nice, like you know, hey, uh, we want to make this as easy and affordable as possible. So here's a nice little way to have this sort of once a week. I get a free, uh, I get a pack for a buck. Uh, there is no physical version of Hex. There never will be um, in, in terms of like a TCG. Maybe there'll be other stuff like we did shirts and uh, maybe we'll make some uh, plush chin hair or some shroomkins. I, I don't know. That's yeah. That cool. Plushies. But, uh, People love plushies. Yeah, right? Especially so, if the shin hairs, you know. <laughs> Those right, guys right. are awesome. And so uh, My girlfriend we, loves them because they're bunnies. I love them because they're samurais. So they got great cross and they're, appeal. And they're, and they're the bad guys too. They're actually pretty evil. So that uh, makes it vicious, even better, right? Vicious animals. Oh, who, who has? Have you seen Watership Down? Rabbits are yeah, not nice. Yeah, yeah that movie, that's her favorite movie, by the way. They are brutal in that movie. Those, uh, rabbits are ruthless, and especially like you think about a, a society that is based, like the, all of their uh, war and combat is based on this idea that they can just make endless troops. That's, that's <laughs> the rabbits, right? They'll just have a thousand more uh, rabbits. That's where the concubines become this incredible <laughs> sort of like witch. Like they're like this, uh, like this. Uh, <laughs> group of religious figures that no one can touch they're like the Bene Gesserit witches and they make all these you know millions of shock troops that they just throw into battle and lose they don't care and then the ones that actually make it through that level are all scarred and they're they're badasses and those are the ones that sort of ascend into the other pieces of the hierarchy in the Shin Hair culture and they've earned the right to be treated as actual sort of like members of society but when you're at that first layer like you're nothing, basically. You're just. <laughs> I'm totally playing that faction, by the way. I love it. No, I, it's and it, I'm so passionate about all of them. Like yeah. I can go on and on about each one of the races. We have so much amazing backstory and so much really cool. There's so many cool hooks for each one of those races that we're gonna start to explore. Like a Shin Hair, easy. Yeah, samurai, feudal samurai, rabbits. Like yeah, who doesn't get that? But then we get on to like what all the coyote will do and what their whole culture is about and even the elves, like which are. Elves tend to be sort of generic, or humans tend to be generic, but the humans actually have the coolest backstory of all the races. 
And so I'm so excited that we're going to get into actually telling those stories. It's, it's great. And now I completely lost track of what your original question was. I'm sorry. I get, <laughs> Wait, I, get, I, I, yeah, I get excited about this stuff. And I, I, I was talking about you know what you would actually charge for and oh, what yeah, the yeah. prices would be in comparison to physical cards and stuff like that. Well, I don't. I don't want it to become pay to win where you have to at least dump in like eighty to a hundred dollars to even be competitive. No, and you your game has a little bit of a buffer of that because you could play PVE and never have to worry about you know whether you're being competitive and buying booster decks and all. All this other stuff yeah. but when you go into pvp that that's what that was my question right so pve is, is is free to play and there's hundreds of cards you can unlock i mean you can have i mean probably hundreds of hours worth of gameplay without spending a dime in the pve side uh, pvp is more like your traditional trading card game and so you know we're very good and we've seen it in the world of warcraft trading card game we're very good at, at uh, having a meta game that is pretty open and allows decks that aren't just you know a, about how much money you spent they're about how good the deck is and how good the player is to still have a competitive chance in a tournament environment. Um, but like most TCGs, you know, you're going to have to collect some cards if you want to build certain decks that are to your play style. And uh, I, I believe it's going to be sort of for the consumer to decide, for the gamer to decide what exactly their comfort level is and what they want to invest in in the game. If it's really just about playing casually with your friends, then you're going to have the chance to play casually for free with your friends whenever. I mean, that's, that's nothing. You'll be able to, hey, let's play a game. Great, let's play but if you really want to be competitive and be in the PvP scene, then yeah, there's probably a, a greater expense associated with that. But I think that we've created sort of the most um, straightforward, honest, and open sort of pay-to-play model that I've seen for a collectibles game to date. And yeah. we believe that this game is great. We believe that you'll be passionate. We believe that it will do just fine. Uh, we don't need to charge you for, uh, you know, yeah, you can play, but you only play eight games a day. You need some extra jewels for power to do this. I mean, we're, all those paywalls are a super big turnoff for me personally. Mm -hmm. And they're not, I think, sort of speaking to the, the core uh, principle of what Hex is trying to be. Yeah, for you to play. So, and that leads into my, I got three more questions here. Uh, yeah, I think no some people may be concerned about the player auction house, at least people from the video game side. See, I come from the video game side. It didn't work out too well in like say Diablo 3. I know it's a lot different for, for car games, but yeah. um, I, I just wanted to, could you explain a little bit about how it works and how much it'll affect the various drop rates uh, of the loot in the game? Or, I mean, are you able to take cards and loot from the PvE and then be playing with it in the PvP? Or are these two different, you know, sections of the game where you, you, you build decks for this side, you customize your decks completely, and they're separate? Uh, yeah, so the, so the, the, the two, two sides yeah. of that question, yeah. uh, PvP is just PvP cards. That's okay. it. You cannot use PvE content. Okay. Uh, PV, PvE side, you can use PvP content. So any card is open in the PvE side. Uh, we're going to have like this sort of Wild West format tournament structure that will be, like the way our, our tournaments are going to work is like a menu, basically. And there's all these things going on at any given time. You can sign up, and it'll send you reminders that a tournament's coming up, and uh, it'll tell you what the prizing is and everything. And there's going to be a bracket that's kind of this Wild West tournament where you'll be able to play every card, all the PvE cards, and so I think people are going to love that because they can build these crazy decks and yeah. like you know just go nuts in that. And people thing. understand people, that it, this is the know, Wild West, so yeah, be yeah, prepared exactly. for that. When you're going into it, that's cool. That's I want to play that. That's gonna be fun. Uh, when it comes to the auction house, uh, it's basically like a full-fledged MMO auction house that you would see in something like a World of Warcraft. Being able to sort by all the different stuff, what highest bids, buy it now, all of that kind of stuff. And so if you're collecting very rare or legendary equipment, as an example, on the PvE side, you can throw it in the auction house, get you know gold or platinum from that, and then use that to go buy PvP cards or, or packs wow, of cards. All right. So there is this other thing, like in the free-to-play side, where if you're you know playing the free-to-play and you've got some amazing stuff you've found, you could actually be selling that to other players and using that to augment your ability to get more cards that are PvP-centric. So it's really this sort of open environment. Uh, we have to be very careful about how we balance the economy elements. We are not engaged in anything that would modify the secondary market value of any of this stuff. These yeah, are your sure. collectibles. And that's an, a very important piece of how a collectibles company has to run. We cannot get involved in the secondary market, but we are opening up a, a, a bill, we're opening up the ability for you to interact back and forth as gamers and do trades. So we do have to be careful about how we balance everything so that things are still desirable and collectible because we want it to be compelling and fun. And like you know, people are underestimating, I think, a little bit how hard it's going to be to get some of the legendary and rare equipment drops. And yeah. so I think that's going to be one of the chasiest things in the game. Okay. 
And is this a real money system or in-game currency or both? Uh, it's all it's in-game currency. Uh, real money auction houses come with a tremendous amount of uh, hurdles to jump through. It's some one of the things that I would love to see for Hex down the line. Uh, but f for us being a small company, we're a small hobby gaming company. It's a huge undertaking for us. We've already invested many, millions and millions of dollars in the game to date. Um, trying to jump over the hurdle of making a real money auction house at this point uh, seems like a challenge that would detract from trying to just get the best game out right now, and I don't think that's a critical flaw that people will uh, have a diminished experience. Okay. Is it something that I'd like to see in the future? 100%, but it's going to take more time. Okay. The, and the first big legal challenge that I'm going to try and, you know, or that Cryptozoic is going to try and jump over is figuring out the uh, real cash prize uh, structure for the oh, online yeah. tournaments. Oh, yeah. And that that's and that's perfect. You mentioned that you will have tournaments. You there's multiple different types of tournaments, including that Wild West. That was my next question. So you already took care of it. But there is a second part of that question. Uh, since it's all digital, and I'm not driving somewhere to be in the tournament, you know, will there be some sort of spectator mode for others to watch and learn from? You know, so people yeah. can get popular and and then make YouTube videos and cultivate a whole community there. This is how I build my deck. This is how I win. Uh, is there going to be a spectator mode? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So one of the big things that we, you know, we brought in a bunch of different, a bunch of players to play the game early to write articles for the website. You may have seen it. Uh, some great people have just an amazing job writing articles, and they were all like sort of or some of them were pro Magic players. And so one of the things we talked about at length was this idea that you know TCGs haven't traditionally or to date done a great job tapping into the esports, uh, you know, movement. And so you know esports start. I mean, you know, uh, Wizards of the Coast. And Magic started esports in some ways. Before Magic, there was no big pro tour for playing. I mean, like chess, yeah, yeah. that's about it. But when it came to like professional <laughs> gaming, and I remember, like, I was uh, talking to a friend, and they told me, "Hey, man, Magic's having a thing called a pro tour where you can win ten thousand dollars for playing the game." I, I lost my mind. I started like <laughs> talking to everyone. I used to go to this place called Costa Mesa Women's Club, where a lot of like. A lot of the early, like, first-gen Magic pros came out of there, like, you know, Brian Hacker and all these people. And I remember talking to people and just losing my mind and going to the card shop. and like, what's the deal? How do you get into this pro tour? And I didn't get to go to the first one, which was in New York. And I wanted to badly, but I couldn't figure out how it worked or who you talked to. I was trying to call what, what the WOTC headquarters. Uh, luckily, after that, they had a pretty... Uh, it, it opened up and they figured out how to do qualifiers and how to make it really available. So I actually, I was in uh, the second pro tour, I was in Long Beach and uh, I was hooked. It was so much fun. When it comes to esports, you know, having been at Blizzard for, you know, four years and having been at the, you know, the Olympic Stadium in, in Korea when they announced StarCraft 2 and just the gasps and the people just <laughs> losing their mind over like, they had a Zerg rush and it was like everyone just like, like I got goosebumps, everyone's just gasping like, Oh my God! And it was just absolutely crazy. And I think that the power of esports to really speak to an aggregated community, to help build celebrity, to give people a chance to look at a different level of play and what goes into that, is something that's so important to me and to everyone working on this project. That uh, spectator modes are one of the things that we're working on. The playbacks we included that as part of the stretch goals. You know, I would be disingenuous if I didn't say that every one of those stretch goals were things that were already on my list of things I wanted to put in the game. And, and that doesn't stop there. I have uh, multiple yeah, guys, pages long. You so. guys have smashed the stretch goals. I'm so happy. One of the recent ones that was just passed was tablets and mobile games. So I'm so happy because, you know, like yeah. I'll be able to uh, play it on my iPad when I, you know, wait in a, a doctor's office or dentist right. or wherever. Um, is it going to be the same game? Like, will it, you know, be your same stuff from the PC, you know, basically a yeah, tie to an account? It's one account. I one mean, you're, account. you're, it's, <laughs> that stuff's all server side. So you're basically logging into your one account. Mm -hmm. It would be uh, terrible if you had to have two yeah. separate collections. Like, that's well, not that's good. That's cool. And so, so an iPad can then play, or iPad, iPhone, whatever, mobile devices. Android too? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll be able to play with PC players? Uh, yeah. So the, okay. the, the, goal, the goal is to aggregate everyone into one clump. So that you always have someone to play with, and people, yeah. lots of people for your guild, and lots of people do raids with, and and if you don't have a lot enough people playing, then the tournament stuff becomes uh, pretty lackluster. You you got to have a lot of people playing, and that's why the Kickstarter has been so great. Is that we're going to start day one with this very passionate, hardcore group of people with uh, tons of free drafts. So there'll be tons of drafts being launched at all times, so you can jump in and always find a game. 
but yeah, the the the, the goal for the the mobile piece for the tablet piece is that it's as if you were playing the PC or Mac game just on your tablet, and so, so that's. A, yeah, and, and as far as the Kickstarter thing, just winding down here, I mean, could you have ever imagined no. the level of success of the Kickstarter? I mean, like, were you I, concerned before this thing kicked off that you wouldn't be able to meet goal and that you would have to sell your body on the side of the street, like in the video, yeah. to get this thing funded? And and why do you think it's been so successful as part two? Uh, well, yeah, no, I was, I was terrified. I was having uh, <laughs> nightmares every night leading up to the launch of this. I was not sleeping well. Uh, I believe in the concept wholeheartedly and have, you know, from the moment that I sort of put those two things together, MMO and TCG, and I, I thought there was, I mean, the first rule of product development is find a need and fill it, and I come at that usually as a gamer and as what I want. Like, what can I not do right now that I would love to? And that's where Hex sort of came from, and uh, yeah, it was terrifying on a couple of levels, making that wacky video, and if this thing had just, like, you know, uh, spiked and become, like, a terrible... Like, you know, I had a $50,000 or, you know, $20,000. The combination of, like, uh, no one likes this idea. No one wants to play this. You made yourself look like an idiot. I mean, I've been in the games industry 20 years, and I have a, I know a lot of people, and it was really putting myself out there. So if it failed, it would be, like, double humiliation. And uh, it double. was... Yeah, that's right. Fatality. Fatality. <laughs> double right. humiliation. So it was uh, terrifying. Uh, that it has exploded like this has been uh, uh, borderline surreal. Like, I can't believe it. And, uh, you know, some of the stuff, like the tier stacking, I did not expect. And uh, was not really my intent, but we said we were going to do it, so it's fine. And, uh, you know, people seem to be happy about it, so great. I mean, yeah. my goal is to make everyone happy to a fault. Uh, I so think, I think one of the reasons why it's been so successful is because I can clearly see your passion for this game, and it's so refreshing to see a CEO or a president of a company be, you know, like hardcore, you know, into this his whole life, and then finally trying to, you know, bring, you know, something unique. Because it, it when I heard of the idea, I was like, son of a bitch. Why didn't I think of that, you know? Because it, it seems like it would be a really cool, unique thing. There is really a lack of unique new genres popping up. So right. a mixture of card games, collectible card games, with MMOs and guilds and dungeons and raids and stuff. Sounds great. So, um... It's. I, I think it's been awesome. Obviously, I'm pledging. I hope everybody out there who's watched this video uh, watches the main Kickstarter video. It's hilarious. It explains the game. They even have some videos of the actual gameplay going on where I think it's the Shin Hairs versus... Uh, what, what's the faction they was playing against? Uh, in uh, you, you play. There was a gameplay bitch. video up on the Kickstarter that you could watch so you could actually see oh, how... There's a bunch. There's a yeah, bunch. There's so a bunch of them. There's a bunch over there. It goes in like with the orcs and the shin hairs. It's a whole bunch. The orcs. That's what it was. So it's shin hairs versus orcs. You can check out how the game plays. See if you like it. And uh, if you do like it, think about contributing. I'm gonna create my own guild in there, the Angry Joe Army, so that we can build decks. We can find the best sorts of decks. Oh, one real quick question before I yeah. end this, because I forgot it from the guild stuff. Now those decks, those are basically just like preview decks that you can, you know, test out. But you can't actually like take them and put them into your inventory inventory and take them away from everybody else or can't can you take that or is that not yet uh figured out uh the uh you know, sorry, the, we, the the guilds where you said that uh you know everybody opens up their packs and stuff and they build their decks and then then they put them in the guild bank saying hey check out this badass new deck i made it's unbeatable can one can i for example come in they're like joe check out this deck i come in i take the deck and I take it out and put it in my inventory and then go no, out no. and play it? Or is it just within the guild bank and yeah. then I and then I go and find the cards that was, you know, in that deck and build my own? Yes, correct. So it's in okay. the guild bank. So there's an interface in the guild system where you're able to actually launch games against other guild members and then it will give you an option to drag down to play all the different decks that are in the guild deck. Or okay, guild. awesome. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that real quick because, you know, I'm excited about uh, about starting my own guild in it. And um, Okay, and one last question here. It says, beta, uh, your is expected or estimated delivery date, you know, it is just estimated, so there, there might be delays, was expected in September. That's for your beta. So yep. where does that put the new alpha? Is it, Would the alpha be available sooner than September? Uh, but that's the goal. So I'm not going to say it's a you know a huge. Uh, my guess is that it will be 
uh, between two to three weeks before we go into the beta. So it's about a probably a three week, I'm going to guess, two to three week preview, but also giving all the Kickstarter people a chance to jump in and register their unique guild names, register their unique keep names, all the stuff that's unique in the game in terms of naming. It'll give you sort of first dibs on that. Uh, it's not going to be a giant extended alpha period, but it'll be a few weeks uh, where you'll have the first chance to play. And I think for, for a lot of people, I mean, I know how I was when I get a chance to play something early. If it's even, uh, you know, three days before everyone else, I feel like, you know, hey, I got the scoop, which is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, right. thank you so much, Corey, for uh, taking the time to uh, answer our questions about the game. And it's just so awesome to, uh, to see this thing coming out finally. And um, I'm excited to play it. Awesome. Very nice talking to you. I really appreciate uh, you supporting it and uh, letting me have a chance to chat with you. Every everyone that uh, we get a chance to give it, you know, a look at the game, absolutely uh, falls in love. So I spend a real blessing. All right, guys. I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe show.